Okay, let's start for the second hour. Uh, I will go through this algorithm again because uh, this is one of the uh, two algorithms that we discuss. Since we won't be discussing the proof for this, let's discuss how it is applied. Its application is a little bit more complicated than the greedy one, right? The greedy one was very simple. You just choose the cheapest edge. So, uh, because it has to be written in an algorithmic language, the way it runs is a little bit uh, less easy to see from the way its algorithm is run, uh, written. So let me explain a little bit how it is done. Uh, so suppose you are choosing already uh, x0, x1, and x2 on some stage. Okay, so we're discussing how the algorithm is drawn. Um, suppose you're at some stage, like k equals 3, and you already constructed x0, you already decided for x0, x1, and x2. And you want to find your new x3. This is almost like uh, you want to form a network, and you want to include into your network new uh, villages. And or it could be like you're trying to form a secret society and you already decided that your, your first member is x0 and then a second member is x1, x2 is the third member. And it could be like the way any organism grows. It could be villages connected with roads growing or some secret organization growing. Something is growing by step by step choosing new members. So suppose you've already chosen these villages. And by choosing them, you also sort of chose the roads between them as well, which you will see. But suppose you want to choose the next member. To choose the next member, which is xk, you ask all these villages already be this candidate that x0 choosing should be from out of the already chosen set, and it should be one of the vertices. So x0 says, this will be the best candidate because this is attached to me and the cost is 6. If you had other ones like 5 and 4, what the x0 chooses is the cheapest road one, right? It will choose this y0 as this one, not that one. So x0 chooses one of the villages among the ones that you can connect from x0 and which are not already chosen which has the lowest cost. That's what this, this line says. For each xi, choose yi among the ones who are not being chosen such that the cost is minimum. Okay? So, for this graph, which we don't have these things, the y0 is this. It's the only candidate, actually. There is no other candidate. Now, the same thing x1 does chooses one of the vertices as the candidate to connect to this already existing graph. And then x1 says y1 is, this one is the best choice because it's the only choice actually. Now for x2 you have two choices. It could be this one or this one. So then x2 says because this is cheaper, I choose this. as So some of the y's can be equal to each other. Okay. So this, uh, some of the y's can be equal to each other. Doesn't mean they're distinct choices. But you form this set, so it's step, like some step, um, six, you have this set, okay? See, because it's a set, these things can be equal. Uh, when I say in that thing, among the, in that set, so when we say in this set, we mean that some of them can be equal. We choose x0 and choose x0 uh, among the, so that, so that all the costs that they 
these villages tell you, you choose the cheapest one. So think about this is an organization or the center uh, construction unit, a career or general military or something. They, they look at all the proposals coming from each village. This village says it's going to cost six million or six zero. Or this village says it's going to cost four. This village says it's going to cost five. Which one would you choose? You will choose the one that's lowest cost again among the, these YIs and say, okay, this is the lowest cost. And I like the proposal of not X1, but X2. So you also choose it as a proposal from someone. So that means you already choose the edge. So you choose X3 as Y2, which means you already preferred which road you're going to build. So these cho choices of X not only comes, but they also comes with some road choice. Okay, because of the because they're choosing as certain Ys. So that's like actually final stage. Uh, once all the XIs are chosen, uh, build, build the road, uh, or choose the edges. In a in a ordered way, from so in this case, for example, uh, you choose uh, X K as Y I. So from J to X K, if X K is chosen as Y J, so if X K is chosen as Y J, that means you like the proposal of the XJ, so your road should be built as a road from XJ to XK. Okay, so here we choose this vertex as X3, but not only that, we choose it as Y2. That's why this road is going to be built, not this one. Okay. Let me say one more thing. Um, there's a phrase here saying that in some cases there are no such YI. The reason for that phrase is really in some cases you may not be able to find any Ys. Suppose you are in the next step, you already have X0, X1, X2 and X3. You want to choose X4. You ask all of them, give me a name, give me a village that we can connect to, we can extend this network. So all of these villages will give you a name, right? This will say, I want this to be built. So Y0 will be this. This one say, I will build, I will like this to be built. This will be Y2. But what will this village will say? We'll say that I have no neighbors that we can connect to. So there will be no, there will be no Y1. Because you cannot really connect to anywhere. And there will be no Y3. So this set that we choose among, some of them don't exist. But there's always at least one of them unless all the vertices are gone. So this set is not empty that you choose from. But it may not be having k minus 1 elements. It may have much less than this number of elements. Okay? So as you see, you will look at this and this, you like one of the proposals and say, okay, this will be X4 and we'll build this road. And the next step, you choose X5, looking at the possibilities. The only this and this will give you proposals. And among these proposals, you will like this one more, and you call this X5, and it will be done. And it, the gra uh, it only finishes when you have n vertices. So this is n vertices, where it's the number of 
all vertices on the graph. There was a question that you said you should calculate all the edges still. I don't know why you say that. For example, in the uh -huh. But I mean, it should be true for all the graphs. Can, do you have a reason to believe that it's true for? In the, in the first one, you said you should uh -huh. But uh, so in the greedy, of course, you can choose certain edges. This is like choosing some of the costs to be infinite. So, like, if you don't want to take an edge here, that's fine. But uh, if I choose x zero as this, and this is another vertex, in the Prebs algorithm, I never have to calculate the cost of this. Let me see. I guess, I guess, yeah, I guess the efficiency, com yeah. Yeah, efficiency comes maybe with... The efficiency comes from the process itself. The, the complexity is different because mm -hmm. uh, for different graphs, they, I check their complexity, and the first one is, mm -hmm. the one is Kruskal's algorithm, I guess. Uh -huh. the other, the yeah, this is called Kruskal, too. So it is, is it written like this, Kruskal? E log E. E plus? E log E. E? E plus V log. V log V. No, you have to have a parenthesis. Like this? Yeah, the issue of complex then how to calculate. Yeah, but there's still. So there's no Okay. Somebody says it. So do you have access to? I said there's a parenthesis. It's about the structure, not the structure. Mm -hmm. If you want to use binary, you have this. Okay, so. Uh -huh. So, when you don't uh -huh. use it, it is faster because it's V of V, the other one is E of E. So, E will be much bigger number. That means that because we are in the V, much smaller. Uh, but where does the efficiency comes from the because you need to sort all of the edges in the greedy algorithm in the first one uh, you don't have to uh, you don't sort the edges all sort the means you you have to look at the for cost each one, for each line one, you have to uh, you can check you don't have to check the uh, Processing x1, mm. you have to look x1. Only the edges around this. Yes, yeah, not all. You don't need to uh, sort x4 and x5. But so you still. Uh -huh. is less elements, which creates the efficiency, I guess. 
So in terms of the, if you look at the schema uh, graph with Maybe one of us should prepare a project on it. Any volunteers to explain what these uh, these things, how they're calculated? Maybe I should announce that again. Uh, at the beginning of the semester, I mentioned that if you uh, feel like after the midterm two, your average is not the, giving you the letter grade that you would like, especially if it's too low, or if it is like, if you want to get an A, but it is on the levels of A minus or B, uh, you can prepare a project for the last week. And things like this, which is not part of this course at this point, like how to calculate the uh, efficiency of these algorithms, if you prepare them, it will be good for us, or for all of us. Or actually other possible project topic will be if you choose any of these things that's been explained and find the application of it in engineering that more like direct application if you give a presentation on it that will be also nice okay so i don't know how to call i mean this speed discussion it's not part of the of this discourse but um, there is efficiency issue and the prims is more efficient. But I thought it's mostly the cost calculation. It's actually um, maybe in the brutal sense that you work on a local local picture maybe more. Yeah, if you're given already a graph with certain edges, that cost calculation should be equal for the both algorithm. But maybe what is more refers to is that if you have like a thousand places to connect to each other, then you just need to look at possible cost. So you create an edge without necessity. Maybe that's why that forming the entire table is costly. But, uh, if you already have some small, some graph, then you don't need the same cost. Maybe the mm -hmm. advantages come from not the finding minimum spending, but the searching. So, yeah, sorting and finding the smallest if one. You, yeah, uh, modify these algorithms to searching, the previous algorithms. Mm -hmm. um, Only searches the vertices around each you vertex. Some, you don't uh, need the edges. distant ones. In Yeah, it's a. Maybe the efficiency comes from the searching, which is also Dijkstra's algorithm. Mm -hmm. The kind of claims algorithm. It's a searching algorithm. I actually know how to calculate the complexity of these, and I, they are accurate. Yeah, it's simple, actually. The grid algorithm is you know, you just sort the edges and pick the first. But E log n for sorting is already uses something that uh, E log n for sorting yes, means that, that is something. Comes from for the the mm -hmm. In the second one, for each vertex, you find uh, uh, you find the, for example, for x one, you uh, you have to check all the pairs x one x two x one x three x one x four. 
for example, and uh, for finding <coughs> such pairs, it's by using it is a log v, and we do it for each vertex once because we have to take one vertex to the set and then update it. The update part is log v, so it's v log v, the other one e log v. Maybe you can explain it to uh, why the sorting is e log e then. Yeah, the. We have to put each pair in uh -huh. different heaps, putting them is log v. And for, if you do it for each edge, there is e log v. And then uh, for, for finding for each x1, you just have to query the top of the heap, which mm -hmm. is log v. If you do it for each one, it's log v. Yeah, if Yeah. But even the fact that uh, I mean sorting complexities e log e uh, doesn't make sense to me. So everyone sees why this is the true as. So how many people sees it? <laughs> one person. If one person only understands it, that means you should prepare a presentation at some point. Huh? Okay, so okay, you volunteer to explain the trivial thing to everyone else because nobody else. Okay. But, but that doesn't cause any extra complexity. I mean, checking for cycles, for example, to me, it's like uh, depends on very much on the graph. Uh -huh. you, but, um, but checking for not creating a cycle, it should be much comparably smaller than that. That's why you probably ignore it. But. You have, for example, uh -huh. pick an edge. Uh, you mark a vector containing those two nodes. And if you pick another edge, and it uh, corresponds to, if, if those two nodes correspond to the same vector, uh -huh. and they are checked, then you don't include it. It is in O1. So O1 is... You ignore that part. Okay. I mean, uh, you have to convince everyone here uh, by preparing something on it. I think. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, this is this is project means that you not only understand yourself but present it so that it's uh, understood by everyone else. Uh, Okay, if you volunteer, I, I will be willing to give you a thirty minute in the last week to present. No? Okay, whatever. Okay, so uh, the complexity issues is a little bit uh, on the air, but other than that, there are two algorithms. This is how they work. I mean, I find the uh, I don't know the complexity theory, so I, I cannot tell you really what, but. Uh, if you intuitively approach, you can probably see this, but to formally establish these complexity formulas, I don't know if uh, you require some other results about the algorithms. But I don't know the complexity of algorithms, and it's not part of the course so far. Mm. By both algorithms, uh, actually, even the fact that prime algorithm gives you minimal, we will not establish. So you could even think about that. Why the prime's algorithm also works? Like, can you find a proof for it, like the greedy one? It's part of. I can actually, let's see. Let me give you a homework for next week. 
One of the questions, I guess, is I will give you another algorithm and ask you if this algorithm works. So this is the homework for next week. Uh, next Friday, I guess. This time I will write the questions. These are not from Grimardi. So if the So this is a little bit too much writing maybe, but Okay, so this is the third question. <laughs> this is just to make sure that at least the algorithms have been understood and you know how to run it.
this time I'll give you four questions. Uh, actually, the fifth one is this. Uh, at the beginning, when I explained these graphs, I said, if you want to end up with a minimal cost subgraph, you should uh, look at, if you write this, I'll pull it up. The simplest approach to this, look at this and say, OK, I'm overpaying because I have cycles, right? So there is a cycle here I'm overpaying. But if on each cycle, if you look at and find the edge that has the highest cost, say on this one, I'm overpaying, and this is the most expensive cost. So do some cost cutting, and you can just take that out. Choose a cycle, find the most expensive road, and obviously that road doesn't have to be there. Okay? Take that road out. Look at the remaining graph, find another cycle, and in that cycle also do the same. Find the most expensive edge and take out it. Do this to every cycle. Eventually you will have no cycles left. And because each time you took it out, you, were, you already had a cycle, what you end up with is connected. Because you never took a bridge out. You always took edges out of cycles. So you have a connected graph with no cycles. What is left is a connected graph with no cycles. So it's a tree. What is left is a tree. And the question is, does this algorithm give a minimal spanning tree? It's so intuitively correct that it should, right? And so you can try to write a proof for it, or argue why it's true and why it gives it. OK, you choose a cycle. You, choose, you take an edge, which is the most expensive edge. And now you choose another cycle. You do the same. The order of cycles is not important. And in the, you end up with a tree. And that question is, is that tree a minimal spanning tree? That's like a bonus question. I won't ask in the quiz. But if you want to play with these things, you can try that. Any questions? Uh, so I want to, I mean, this is a question, a homework for next week. And uh, I want to give you a little bit what we are up to. So I want to discuss, starting next week, something called clicks. So this is uh, Advertisement, basically. Say you want to look at graphs. This graph has no triangles on it, right? How many more edges you can add without creating any triangles? How many vertices I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten vertices. I can add, say, this edge without creating any triangle. Right? I can add, if I add this, it's a triangle. I can add this one, I guess, without creating a triangle. I can add this one. I can add this one. I can add this one. This one, one, two, three, four. After some point, you can feel that you will create a triangle. 
there will be a triangle in there. You cannot infinitely many, like you cannot continue adding edges and take that, you'll not create a triangle. What's triangle? It's a, actually a subgraph where all the vertices are attached to each other. Similar to triangle question, you can ask, like, when can I add edges so that I have, I don't have one of these, or none of these. So what are these? These are complete graphs. So these are called complete graphs. It means that all the edges between any two vertices is part of your graph. And they have names actually. This is called K3. This is called K4. This is called K5. And in more general N, you call a KN a complete graph with N vertices. So in general, you can sort of sense that if you keep adding edges, if you have more and more and more edges, your graph becomes more and more complete. Right? So there are levels of edge numbers of edges, which will guarantee that you always have a K3 in it. And if you add more edges, you can also guarantee that you should always have a K4 in it. K4 has already K3 in it, right? So it's much harder to get K4 inside your graph. K3, K4, you can also see K5 is much harder to find in the graph. And in some graphs, you want to find a K5 in it. And you want to guarantee that there is always a K5 in your graph by saying that if I have more than this many edges, I definitely will have a K5 in it or Kn in it. We will do theorems like this. It will take a couple of steps and a couple of different things we have to consider first. But what we want to be able to say, there's always a Kn in the graph if you have more than this many edges. And the Kn inside the graph is called a creek of size n. So inside your graph, if you have a, uh, say, Kn, then you say you have a click of size n. If kn is inside g, then we say g has a click. So clicks of size n is what do we want to find? Um, The complement of that question is finding uh, a subset. The converse question is a subset of vertices where none of the two has an edge between them. For example, these three, if I choose them, it will be like a vertex set where there are no edges between them in the graph. Such things will be called independent sets. So this will be an independent set. So something is called independent set if you have no edges between any two vertices. The relation between independent set and clicks is that if you take the complement graph, an independent set becomes a click. And if you take a click in the complement graph, it becomes an independent set. So if you want to know what, how big independent set you can find in your set, you actually will use the theorems or reduce observations about clicks of size, certain size, because you can apply them to the complement graph. Okay? So they will be very closely related to each other. If you want to know, if you know theorems about clicks, 
then you will be able to say something about independent set by taking the complement graph, applying those things about clicks. And you can see that these are interesting observations or things that you want to know about your graph, like independent set. You want to know like what is the maximum set of vertices which there is no way there's the edge between them. Can you think of any application in real life? Uh, click actually in Turkish called hizip. So in a in parliament, if there are people who are already connected to each other, it's usually called a click. You can also use in society. In society, friends of if you find ten people, they're all friends to each other in two way, not through some other people. If they know each other, you say it's a click of size ten. So in social networks, it's used. To, uh, some way you want to find clicks. Also, you want to find people who are not related to each other. Maybe in a biology, in a test, if you want to do a, some experiment, you want to find people who are not relatives to each other, what's the maximum size? Uh, rabbit society, rabbit population, or I don't know. But these things are studied and people are interested. So, Okay, so enough for today. I'll see you next week.